but I'm a senior biomedical engineering student at San Jose State University. Our study is the feasibility of printed supercapacitors. So um, the scope of our project was to design, print, and develop printed supercapacitors to determine the feasibility of their development. And a little background about supercapacitors, um, they work by having a electrochemical layer and ions moving across the layer current collector layer to pull these ions And the materials we had for our project were uh, PET for our substrate, silver ink for our electrode, carbon ink for our uh, electrochemical layer, and electrolyte for the targets, PVE for our separator, and mesh filters. And we varied um, the carbon layers, the types of electrolytes, and uh, the number of electrolyte layers. And the first step was ink characterization. So we purchased uh, off-the-shelf inks, and we characterized the curing time and temperature. And then we also got uh, PET and substrate, which we cut. We then developed our mesh stencils, and this was used to print the supercapacitors into specific shapes. We printed the layers, and we um, printed it in this fashion as shown here and then we fixed it to bind the two layers. After we did a physical analysis of the thickness of each layer, and we did electrical performance testing to determine if um, the, our supercapacitors were functioning. Oh, and our results were that um, uh, these were the thicknesses that were displayed. Our average overall thickness was 331 to 405 microns. The electrical performance, as shown here, we varied uh, the carbon layers, the types of electrolytes, and the number of electrolyte layers. Um, for the first uh, electrolyte, it did function, and our highest capacitance we got was 162.43 nanofarads, and that was with three layers of carbon and two layers of electrolyte. The second um, uh, capacitor with uh, the type B electrolyte did not function and it had very low capacitance. Can you explain the uh, rest of the electrical performance results? So as we mentioned, uh, we are already proved that the samples with uh, vendor A electrolyte can um, hold the charge, but we still need to determine like, how long it can be held it to prove the feasibility of the printed supercapacitor. So we did two self-discharge tests for uh, one for the supercapacitor with vendor A electrolyte and one for the supercapacitor with vendor B electrolyte. And as you can see in this graph, this is the one for the supercapacitor with vendor A electrolyte. You can also see that uh, all types of the samples are able to hold charges for a certain amount of time. The type sticks, which are the one with triple carbon layer and double electrolyte layer, can hold the charges for 138 seconds. And all samples with vendor B electrolytes experience an instant voltage drop after disconnecting from the power supply, indicating that the vendor B electrolyte is not appropriate for this application. And we also did the cross-sectional imaging and stem imaging to determine the properties and the assembly. So for the cross-sectional image, we, we cut one sample in half and examine the cross-section of the fully assembled supercomputer. So in the stem image, we further investigate those white dots, those white dots on the single carbon layers and we, found, we observed that there as well formations for a mo multiple penetration sites. This will be linked to the future work to investigate the chemical interaction between materials and we also verify the carbon porosity. Um, the carbon porosity is important to the printed supercapacitor because the more porous it is, the more space it can be used to hold the charges. So we were able to determine in our senior project was that printing, manufacturing printing supercapacitors with all the shelf are feasible since they are able to be charged and discharged. Also, we also noticed that there is a, an uneven distribution of ink upon layering the surface roughness across a single layer point. And to have the supercapacitor have a higher, better electrical performance, the amount of electrolyte will need to be increased.
For our future goals, we need to explore more about the materials, further investigate the characteristics of the inks, perform electrical analysis on the life cycle, energy density, and the voltage, and possibly change the type of ink, such as the carbon ink into activated carbon ink or graphene, which provides a better surface area and thus a better ability for the supercapacitor to come charge. Also, we need to perform more of the flexibility analysis because this is how a flexible substrate. Uh, we need to understand more about the electrical performance once that substrate is being uh, bent or moved into a different kind of direction. And then also design of manufacturing process for the mass production of this expensive super capacity. And we would also like to acknowledge Jabo for helping us for full sponsorship of this uh, of our senior project, as well as our SJSU advisor, Dr. Lewis of Uri and Aaron also, we will need to uh, thank our the company for donating the separators. And once again, thank you. Thank you. This is our senior project presentation on.